Lauren! When you're in Cleveland, it's not a bad idea to take a couple of minutes to enjoy the emerald necklace. It's kind of a shame. My hometown of Cleveland can sometimes get a bit of an unfair reputation as being smoggy and old and, well, everything that this isn't. Welcome, my friends, to the Cleveland Metro Parks. This is the Rocky River Reservation behind us. Uh, not, not just this. This is amazing. This is huge. But this is just a tiny, tiny, tiny sliver of the Cleveland Metro Parks. The Emerald Necklace, if you will. Believe it or not, the Cleveland area boasts one of the most famous and easily one of the most beautiful park systems of any major metropolitan area. Fishing, a uh, little bit of canoeing, there's uh, hiking, there's uh, biking, there's tennis courts, picnics, uh, playgrounds, anything that you could think of to do outside uh, with your family that is legal, uh, you can find here in the metro parks. And honestly, some of these trails that you see here are just absolutely gorgeous. See all of the beautiful greenery, the moving water, the shale cliffs. This is the side of Cleveland that we don't really hear enough about. Now I could easily take you down any of these hiking trails, these running trails, these biking trails, and find something amazing to show you that you probably wouldn't expect. But with the small amount of time that I've got in town, I've got to be on a plane in a few hours, uh, I wanted to show you something kind of cool, uh, something a little historical, something a little unexpected. Join us today as we do just a little exploring. One of the things you'll notice about this area is there are a lot of people walking their four-legged friends, uh, both on the trails and across the parks. Now, in this particular case, it's a Saturday afternoon. It's about noon right now. Uh, we're in August. I want to say we're at the 14th, maybe 13th of August. Um, the weather's perfect. Now, if I was in Orlando, it would be 98 degrees. Here in Cleveland, we're probably on maybe the mid-70s. In this particular case, I've parked my car over here at the Cleveland Metro Parks Memorial Field at the Rocky River Reservation. And I point this out because, like I said, this is an absolutely enormous set of parks. It uh, goes through city after city, mile after mile. Uh, very easy to get lost back here if you don't know where you're going. Uh, if you would like to check out what we're going to check out today on your own, this is what you need to look for. Now, what are you looking for specifically? Well, you're coming out of Rocky River. Uh, Rock Cliff is the name of the road that comes down into the Metro Parks here. And uh, you're going to go maybe about a half a mile uh, to your right after coming down Rock Cliff. And you'll know you're here when you see this enormous field. You see there's a, there's a small baseball field over there. Uh, there's the remains of an old one over there. I'm not sure if it's still uh, in operational use. Uh, there's another one right over here. But this enormous field completely surrounded by the greenery and people and their dogs. And when you get down here, you're going to go maybe about 200 yards to your left. You get out of your car, turn left, walk about 200 yards, and you'll see exactly where we're going today. Just at the edge of the parking lot, you'll see this memorial over here. Is this, is this the memorial that is referenced in Rocky River Memorial Park? Well, it could be. This is, after all, a war hero. But perhaps not quite the war hero that you may have expected. And uh, certainly uh, not someone who came back and went into obscurity. No, this is someone who actually blazed new trails both on the battlefield and at home. I give you Smokey. Smokey, by the way, is uh, a Yorkshire Terrier. Uh, about a four pound Yorkshire Terrier. Very small Yorkshire Terrier. And as you can see, by the offerings laid in the basket, Smokey continues to be very popular even after passing. Now our story with Smokey begins in World War II uh, in New Guinea of all places. Uh, Smokey was found by uh, the US Army in, of all things, a, a foxhole in New Guinea. This tiny four pound, adult four pound, mind you, 
Yorkshire Terrier was found in this this uh, messy, dirty, dark foxhole, and no one really knew where she came from. The original assumption when they first found her was that she probably belonged to some of the uh, the Japanese soldiers who were positioned not too far away. So the the uh, military folks uh, picked her up. And, and took her back over to where they had some prisoners of war. They were, when they got there, somewhat surprised to find that Smokey didn't seem to respond to commands in English or in Japanese. So the chances are she wasn't really a pet of one of the Japanese soldiers either, which left them kind of scratching their heads as to what exactly should we do with this four pound dog? So, at this point, one of the GIs decides they're going to sell Smokey to another GI, uh, this one uh, Corporal William A. Wynn, who, who bought Smokey for a total of what would now be considered $6.44. And why was that the price that had been negotiated? Because the GI who sold the dog needed to get back to a poker game, and that was the in to get back to playing. So, Mr. Wynn gets Smokey. The other GI goes back to the poker game. Over the next several years, this dog goes everywhere with uh, Colonel Wynn, including uh, going through the jungles, uh, at one point parachuting out of a tree with a custom parachute, and uh, even being in several battlegrounds. Now, this dog uh, became very well known, very well loved by the different companies that were around the dog because uh, not only was she seen as a little bit of a mascot and a symbol of good luck, but she also had a reputation for uh, helping alert these soldiers when danger was present. Uh, the dog would, would pick up on uh, enemies closing in or dangerous situations before the soldiers would and, and alert them. So needless to say, uh, this dog right here was, was very, very well respected by the American military. And pretty soon they learned that she can do certain other things. Yeah, she did tricks and that was always a very big popular thing, you know, to keep the morale up. But one of the things that she is most well known for is, believe it or not, her assistance in building an airfield. Long story short is they were building an airfield in Luzon, which was a very crucial airfield uh, in the Philippines, they had a 70-foot pipe that needed to run a telegraph wire, and uh, unfortunately it had filled up with dirt. It was uh, too small for uh, humans to get into it, and the soldiers would have had to have gone up above ground uh, and been exposed to enemy fire and dangerous conditions in order to pull this pipe up, dig it through, and, and run the telegraph wire. But at eight inches, even when it was filled with dirt, it still left four inches left over. And that's where Smokey came in. Throughout the entire war, this dog picked up quite a few honors, quite a few medals and uh, accolades. And perhaps uh, even more impressive afterwards, she picked up uh, a designation of being the world's first service animal. If you've seen Forrest Gump, you remember the part where he got injured and uh, they took him out of the, out of the field and he, he went around with the USO and he did uh, a lot of ping, uh, ping pong in order to kind of keep the morale of the troops up. Uh, this is a little something like that. When they got out of the war, uh, Colonel Wynn and Smokey traveled the world visiting soldiers in the hospitals, uh, going uh, on TV to show some of the, the, the amazing tricks that she learned as part of the, the war. Uh, visiting troops that were, were injured and keeping their morale up, just spent the next 10 years just traveling the entire world, was, was in uh, TV shows and movies and news stories, uh, just one of the most famous dogs that you could ever imagine, right over there. Now unfortunately, in uh, the 1950s, Smokey unexpectedly passed away one day, but she was, she was 14 years old, it wasn't like she was, she was terribly young but uh, she did die unexpectedly, and uh, Colonel Wynn came down here to the Metro Parks and put her in a, uh, a canister, it was an old Ornette's canister, and uh, buried her right here, and then in 2005, you can see the date right here, 
they placed this memorial right here, Smokey, uh, Yorkie, Doodle Dandy, and Dogs of All War. Uh, Yorkie Doodle Dandy was the name of the book that Colonel Wynn wrote about Smokey. And you can actually see right here this uh, little statue they've got. They've put the aviator's honor, uh, a tightless ball. There's uh, fake money. There's real money. A couple of other things in there. Uh, this is actually from a fairly famous photograph of, of the, the young lady in a real helmet. This is, this is a, a pretty life-size uh, version of, of that photograph. Now, this is Rocky River Memorial Field, so of course they have the memorial to Smokey, but they also have, right over my shoulder, a memorial to other service dogs in the war. Right here we've got the Canine Heroes marker. It says here, dogs have been an important part of the U.S. military effort since World War I, serving as scouts, sentries, and trackers, along with providing immeasurable companionship. Now, what you see here are uh, a photo of five different dogs. You've got Stubby, York, Nemo, Chips, and Smokey. Uh, Smokey, of course, is the one we talked about. And you can see, actually, that photograph I was talking about. This is the picture of Smokey that ended up translating to this beautiful bust. But here you see Stubby from World War I. Uh, saved a regiment from a surprise mustard gas attack. Also was... Uh, pretty well known for being able to locate wounded soldiers. You have York, who was given a Distinguished Service Award for performing 148 combat patrols around and in Korea. You've got Nemo. Nemo, I believe, is this one right here. Uh, Nemo was shot in the head in Vietnam and still charged at the enemy, which allowed his uh, handler to uh, get to safety. The dog did survive, but lost vision. Uh, right down here is Chips. Chips was in World War II, broke away from his handler uh, to attack a pillbox containing an enemy machine gun crew, uh, seizing one man and forcing the crew to surrender. And then, of course, uh, we have Smokey, who we've been talking about right here. Now, in addition to the dogs and the memorials over there, there's this other memorial over here. Uh, there's a plaque stating, Memorial Field was dedicated to all who served with honor in the armed forces of the United States. Looks like it is a Lakewood Joint Veterans Council 1947 rededicated in 2005 and that is right here in this same area you see this circle with uh, Smokey's memorial and and grave the canine heroes memorial and of course you have our flag now this is just one of so very many things to see here in the metro parks um, I, I actually spent a little bit of time this morning trying to figure out what it was that I was going to show you because there were so many things like I said, uh, besides all of the amazing natural wonders and the memorials, uh, there are old uh, theme parks that were built, well, amusement parks, that were built in this area that have uh, long since gone away. Uh, you can still travel down, you're not really supposed to, uh, but you can still travel around those areas and see what's left. There's, there's not much left. Most of them have been built over, but you can still see some of the areas where they were and get an idea as to what used to be there. Um, there are some amazing uh, structures, man-made structures here, uh, cabins and uh, old inns, old tea rooms, things like that. But today, I really thought that uh, giving Smokey her due was, was the right way to go. So if you're in Cleveland, uh, come on out. It'll only take you five minutes, and really, it is a very powerful uh, memorial. In the meantime, if you haven't done so already, definitely uh, reach down below if, if you enjoyed this. If you got something out of it, uh, uh, give it a thumbs up and the, the usual subscribe button thing. Uh, ring the bell, I suppose, is what you're supposed to do. And uh, join those motorcyclists next time as we do just a little sport.